Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. Today's video is going to be a lengthy one, but what I'm going to do is show you every single named legendary item that you can get from a drop in the upcoming new mutated dungeon, which is the Starstone Barrows and Amride mashup. Now I'm going to start with all the different weapons you can get and we'll move our way to the different armor pieces. But again, this is currently in the PTR. So some things might change here and there, but overall everything's going to be pretty close to what will actually hit the live version of the game. So with that being said, let's jump right into the fire staffs. So in this dungeon, you can actually find two different fire staffs. The first one being Flare Spark, with the three perks being Accelerating Flamethrower, Refreshing Evasion, and Keen. And the second fire staff being Staff of the Immolated Veal. And that's going to be Keen, Empowering Meteor Shower, and Mortal Power, which honestly doesn't sound that bad. Moving on to the next weapon, we have the Great Axe, which honestly I think is the most interesting item drop that you can get from this entire dungeon. And that's because this first one over here calls out that it currently has enchanted and thwarting strikes in the same weapon. Now this is most likely a bug that they will update down the road, but if not, we might want to consider using this new great axe when it comes to wars and PvE content. But again, we'll see if this actually makes the live version. The second great axe is the Sunder Strike, where it has enchanted, life stealing, and chain ice. Moving on to the next weapon, we have the Rapier. And there's actually only one Rapier in this new dungeon, and it includes Keen, Keen Speed, and Mortal Refreshment. Not bad if you really use it for kind of a getaway weapon. Next up, we have Ice Gauntlets, and there are three different Ice Gauntlets that you can get from this new dungeon. The first one is Frozen Mire, and you can get Enchanted, Keenly Fortified, and Unbroken Winds. Next up, we have Creeping Cold, where you can get Keen, Mortal Power, and Life Stealing, and last but not least, Long Winter which has the Unending Thaw, Kirk, Life Stealing, and Shirking Frost. So nice to see more of those Shirking Attunement type of named weapons popping up here and there. Um, and I'm sure we'll see some more pop up soon. Next up, we have a single Void Gauntlet drop that you can get from this dungeon. And it is called the Abyssal Reckoning, where it has Refreshing Rupture, Refreshing, and Keenly Jag. Not great, but also not awful if you're just starting off with the Void Gauntlet. It's definitely something nice to play around with. Next up, we have Spears, and there are three different Spears that you can find in this new mutation. And the first one is Burial Spear, where it has Enchanted, Thwarting Counter, and Enfeebling Skewer. Again, this is kind of similar to the Great Axe because Enchanted and Thwarting Counter are typically in the same perk pools, and you don't usually see these items together on the same item. So we'll see if this actually stays the same. If it does, it's going to be major to the game. If not, which is probably assumed, we'll see which of the two perks they replace and with what. Next spear, we have Tip of the Morning Star, and that includes Keen, Enfeebling Skewer, and Trenchant Rend. Not bad, overall a decent spear. Lastly, we have Two-Face, which is Rogue, Plagued Crits, and Keen. I know Rogue is probably one of the best perks when it comes to PvE content, so this might be a good one to pick up for some easy PvE and mutated dungeon play. Next up, we have the Swords, and there's actually five different swords that you can find in this dungeon. I'll quickly go for the, through the first three, and then we'll see the last two. First up, Borrowed Blade, where we have Contagious Reverse Stab, Keenly Jag, and Refreshing Move. Next, we have The Space Between, where it has Hated, Enchanted, and Keenly Fortified. Not a bad uh, tank spear there, I mean tank sword. And then Simon Gray's Toothpick. We have Keenly Empowered, Keen, and Refreshing Flesh. So not too bad. Um, but again, there's five different swords in this dungeon, with the last two being the Glacial Longsword, which has Chain Ice, Trenchant Crits, and Keen, and then Unanswered Question, which has Thwarting Counter, Keenly Fortified, and Keen. 
Next up, we have two weapons that are actually, there's just one drop of each in this dungeon. First being the Great Sword, where you can get Refreshing Move, Plague Strikes, and Trenchant Recovery. Honestly, not that bad, but we're kind of missing that heavy DPS perk, whether it be Thwarting Strikes or Trenchant Strikes. But regardless, not awful. And then there's also one Blunderbuss that you can get from this new dungeon, which has Leeching Shrapnel Blast, Mortal Refreshment, and life steal. Now we have the hammers and there are three different hammers you can get here. First being Crusher's Craze, which has enchanted, life stealing, and chain fire all around a decent hammer. Then we have the obelisk, which is enchanted, keen, and sundering shockwave. I know that sundering shockwave is debatably the best weapon perk to have on a hammer. Some people like that, some people like Leeching Path of Destiny. But overall, I think this is a great kind of starter weapon in regards to beginners that might be jumping into wars here and there. And then lastly, Ritual's Call, which has Sundering Shockwave, again, great weapon perk, Mortal Fortification, and Kingly Empowered. Next up, we have bows, and you can get three different types of named bows from this expedition. First one, Cavern Lurker's Defense, which is Enchanted, Vorpal, and Shirking Arcane. Next up, we have, oops, let me get rid of this hammer here, Ancient Heartstring, which has Life Stealing, Mortal Life Steal, and Thwarting Counter. Overall, pretty interesting. We'll see if that changes down the road, though, once it hits the live version. And then the last bow is Signal, which has Chain Fire, Enchanted, and Mortal Power. Now let's jump into some of the armor pieces, starting with the helmet, where there are three different helmets here, a heavy, a light, and a medium one. The medium one is focus. Uh, there's a focus on focus, which has ancient ward invigorated and then refreshing. The heavy helmet is focused with constitution as the main attribute with resilient, physical aversion, and critical retribution. And lastly, the light helmet has refreshing freedom and elemental aversion. Not terrible, but definitely better options out there. When it comes to some of the jewelry, we have three different rings that you can get here. First one is Simon's Hack Silver Ring, which has slash damage, leeching, and hardy. Then we have the Fanged Ring, which has thrust damage, leeching, and nature damage. And lastly, the Stone Hoon Ring, which has Hardy, Sacred, and Siphoning. Now onto the amulets. We have three different amulets here. First one, the Amrine Exec Excavators. I'm not even gonna pronounce that. But yeah, the first one is strength focused and it has refreshing, purify, and health. Then we have the next one with the focus with intelligence, which has mana recovery, health, and arcane protection. So that could be a pretty good uh, mutated amulet, honestly, for some of those arcane specific mutations. And then lastly, we have a amulet that has constitution as the main attribute with slash damage, slash protection, health, and divine. Overall, pretty good for bruisers, great for PvP content especially with everyone kind of playing around with the great sword lately. Now these last pieces, there's actually only one piece that you can find of each in this new expedition, starting with the, the medium chest piece. All of these are part of the Simon Gray set and the Simon's chest has ancient ward invigorated refreshing. The pants, as you can guess, ancient ward invigorated refreshing. Same with the boots, and of course, we'll end it with the gloves. Which honestly, overall, if you're trying to run M10 Lazes and things along those lines with lots of ancient enemies, this set might be the way to go um, if you're not kind of one of those individuals that really push the heavy luck and ancient set. But regardless, these are the many different drops that you can find in the upcoming dungeon. I hope that you gathered some information from this and it kind of helped you out and whether or not you want to grind this new mutated dungeon out or not. 
But regardless, thanks again for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And if you got something out of this, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys next time.